Hey everybody and thank you for tuning in to the Junior Golf Network. I'm your host, Sarah Davis. This weekend we were at the Galloping Hill Golf Course covering HJGT's Union County Junior Open. This is the finale of season one and my last official episode as the host. That being said, we have a ton of exciting content to get to, a lot of tournament coverage, we look back on the best moments of season one and much, much more. Galloping Hills Golf Course had breathtaking views. With deer roaming the course, beautiful landscaping and elevated greens, the layout put up a challenge. With six divisions in the field and two playoff matches, New Jersey was the place to be. Kicking off the tournament with the 16-18 Boys Tiger Woods Division, the champion was Liam Cray from River Edge, New Jersey. Cray shot 75 on day one and battled on the second day, shooting an 81. Strengths this week, um, day one I was striping it off the tee and I was hitting good approach shots. Um, today I was mostly putting well, um, you know, so it sort of flipped what I was doing well. Back nine I struggled here today, but I put, I put enough together to come out with a victory. The runner-up was Tim Benedi from Garrison, New York, finishing one stroke behind the leader. Benedi shot 76-82 for a total of 158. Finishing third was Richard Earhart from Milburn, New Jersey. He shot 80-79 for a total of 159. Earhart had this impressive shot out of a hazard and drained the putt on hole eight. In the 14-15 Will Smith division, Elliot Parker was the champion. He came in a day one tied for first with a 75. However, he battled on day two and finished with a 77, winning the division by two strokes. I think it was just uh, my mentality. Um, I never really got flustered over anything. And I made sure like if I hit a bad shot, just tell myself, far as possible, bogey as possible, bogey is not a bad score. And especially with the hills and how windy it has been this weekend, a bogey really isn't a bad score. Angad Mendeus from Stanford, Connecticut was the runner up. He shot 78-76 to finish the tournament 12 over par. There was a two-way tie for third between Michael Estrauer from New York, New York and Jack Estrella from Brookville, New York. Estrauer shot 75-81 with birdies on 9 and 18 to finish the tournament with a total of 156. Estrella shot 76-80 to finish the tournament 14 over par. In the 11-13 Ernie Owls Boys Division, there was a one-hole playoff for first. Matthew DeFiore from Malvern, New York and Harry Cohn from Wickoff, New Jersey went head-to-head. -head. DeFiore striped one down the middle and hit his pitch shot to eight feet, then drained the birdie putt to win the division. Cohen, the runner-up, had seven birdies this weekend. He shot a 76-74 to finish eight over par. Tong C from Milburn, New Jersey took third, shooting 77-74, finishing the weekend nine over par. In the U-10 Bryson DeChambeau division, the champion was Ray Hao Fang from Short Hills, New Jersey. Fang shot 78-81 for a total of 159. Mostly my wedges and some chipping, I think is the most, is the best. The runner-up was Axel Brandis from Bernardsville, New Jersey. He shot 79-81 for a total of 160. At the age 10, he has an impressive scoring average of 80. Ethan Yao from Manaset, New York took third, shooting 79-83 for a total of 162. Switching gears over to the girls' divisions. In the 14-18 Justin Timberlake division, Sydney Koo from Edison, New Jersey was the champion, shooting 74 and then firing a low 68 on day two. Koo finished the second day with an impressive scorecard of four birdies and only one bogey. Just consistency, you know, being able to get on the fairways, get on the green, regulation, and then just making putts.
There was a two-way tie for second between Latita Rogner from Greenwich, Connecticut and Amber Pennington from Accord, New York. Rogner shot back-to-back -back 76s with five birdies all weekend, finishing both days five over par. Pennington also shot back-to-back -back 76s, finishing the tournament 10 over. In the U13 Girls Justin Rose Division, there was a one-hole playoff match for first place. Ray Fang from Short Hills, New Jersey and Jacqueline Zhang from Princeton, New Jersey went head-to-head. -head. Zhang pulled ahead after sticking her second shot close and draining the putt, shooting 81-77. Fang shot 81-77 and was the runner-up, finishing the tournament 16 over par. At the age 12, she has an impressive scoring average of 80.6. Fang shot 82-76 and was the runner-up, finishing the tournament 16 over par. On day one, she drained this long birdie putt on 17. This week's rapid fire segment features Asher Katz from the U10 Bryson DeChambeau division. He shared with us the impressive age that he scored his first hole in one. Titleist. Um, 10. Oh, excellent. Sit. Oh my God, that might be a hole in one. Buffalo chicken. Um, Tiger Woods, cause he never gets old. 71. Vanilla. Fruits. Camera trip. Summer. My mom. Um, happy go. The juniors have learned so much about life from playing golf. They shared with us the valuable lessons that golf has taught them. The most valuable life lesson golf has taught me is to just never give up and keep going, even through the tough holes and the bad things that happen, you just never give up and keep going. Always be honest. Honesty gets you a long way. Patience. Just to focus on yourself and try to be different and just be yourself. Um, you know, emotions always get out here, you know, sometimes worst case scenario can happen. You just have to move on with it, accept that it's happened, you know, you have to live with that and, you know, you just have to learn to clear your head as soon as possible. Um, to, like, never give up, no matter the circumstances. Golf has mostly taught me resilience because even when I, like, start playing bad and in golf, it's like, you have to know that a round of golf consists of 18 holes. So even if you have a bad start, which I mostly have, um, you have to be resilient and kind of like push yourself and tell yourself that it's okay and then that you still have like let's say 17 more holes to go and you can like play well in those 17 holes because round of golf is like longer than just a hole. Advice can go such a long way depending on who you're hearing it from. The junior shared with us some of the best and worst golf advice that they've received over the years. The best golf advice I've ever received is just be yourself and stay focused on the game. The best golf uh, the advice I've ever received is to just let your round come to you and not expect anything and you'll get a good result from that. Keep your emotions under control. Don't let your emotions control your round. Uh, the best golf advice I've ever received is to put a stick in front of your ball at the range and hit it around the stick. Take it one shot at a time. Swinging smoothly. Uh, to always stay in it and never give up until it's over. So the best golf advice I've ever received is to just take one shot at a time and like not let the bad shots distract you. Uh, missing the right spot. The worst golf advice would be just a swing tip someone gave me on the range and I have my own lessons, no point really listening to it. The worst golf advice for me is to keep your head down. Hit the ball as hard as you possibly can and it will go straight. Someone trying to tell you something different than what you already know. It's kind of the opposite, just to try and force the round, because then you don't get good results and 
gets in your mind? Uh, probably to just go on the range and don't care about your shot and the range session doesn't really matter. Tell me, as you swing, jump, jump, lift your feet off the ground. Uh, swing as hard as you can when you practice. As season one comes to an end, we wanted to reflect on some of the special moments that have happened at the tournaments that we've covered. Annie Zhang won the Justin Timberlake 14-18 division. Winning in a three-way playoff match, Zhang finished on a high note as she drained a 40-foot birdie putt on the second playoff hole to close out the victory. It's just I didn't make that many mistakes, but um, I think my strength was, um, my putting was really well. I made a few long putts today, and especially for the last playoff, I made the 10-yard putt. But um, overall, I think my irons is pretty strong too. Um, had a lot of within 10 yards, and which allowed me to score more birdies. I'm gonna walk in. I'm not gonna look at the ball until I like I put the club face down by it. And then I'm gonna set, then you set up, okay? Give the ladies a wink, and then you send it. In the Tiger Woods division, Logan Hunter from Tampa, Florida was the champion, winning by seven strokes. Hunter took second place last weekend at PGA National and said that this was his weekend to win. And he was right. Firing a 68 both days, Hunter only made five bogeys all weekend, which were balanced by his 11 birdies. Hunter also had his grandparents cheering him on to his victory. Today, you know, I didn't get off to a great start. I did birdie one, but I was one over after eight. It hit a big par pot on eight from 20 feet. That really changed the momentum around. And I uh, played really well in the back line, stuck it close and made a few putts. Davis Downing from Windermere, Florida was the champion in the Ernie Els division, finishing the tournament one under par. Downing battled his way to first, entering day two in second place. However, he also fought a battle that no other player did. Downing is a type 1 diabetic, and on hole 10, his blood sugar skyrocketed to 400. Almost having to withdraw from the tournament, Downing fought to keep the lead. With tough holes on 10, 11, and 12, he bounced back with birdies on 13 and 17 to finish the round two under par. Yeah, my blood sugar went to uh, 400 there on the 10th hole, and so we had to change everything. But uh, there were a rough three holes where I was feeling pretty awful. Through. Boys 16 18 Tiger Woods Division. Ronaldo Simone from Orlando, Florida swept the field, winning the division by nine strokes. He won under par both days, shooting 66 70 for a total of 136. On day one, Simone had an impressive two eagles and four birdies to finish six under par. At only 17 years old, he has an incredible scoring average of 68. Yeah, let's go. He shared the key to his success. Putting and driving. I don't think I missed more than three fairways the whole round. Frank Bellino from Sarasota, Florida took third, finishing three over par. Bellino finished day one three over, however, finished even on day two after carding six birdies. He's known for his birdie celebrations like this one on 17. For Teen Boys Division, Philip Dunham from Ponte Vedra, Florida pulled off another win, finishing five under par and beating the division by seven strokes. Dunham is only 12 years old and had 14 birdies this weekend. This was his 18th hole, a par five. He was on the green in two and just barely missed this putt for eagle, instead having a tap in birdie. Just on the first day, I, when you get a couple birdies in a row, you just kind of keep going and you get a lot. Um, I never really found a rhythm, but that 600 on one nine helped. Keep a shot back to back 77s and bounce back with an impressive 73 on the final day. Kiba made 10 birdies all weekend and heading into the 18th hole tied for third, he had this shot out of the trees, hitting a low draw and landing in the bunker. He then put the bunker shot to 20 feet and drained the putt for birdie to finish second. Angelina Talentino, only 13 years old, finished day one in the lead and ended up taking home the trophy after shooting two under in her second round. Angelina was successful in every area of the game. However, her driver was what led her to her success. She shared with me what her mentality was going into the second day. Don't be so hard on yourself. 
and yeah, just have fun. Over 90% of the players in this tournament are from the local area. We test it out to see how well they can pronounce the surrounding cities. Take a look. Mantua. So, Mantua. Mantawa. Mantua. 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 Seawells. Sewell. Sewell. So, Sewell. Sewell. <laughs> Sewell. Swell. Uh, Gloucester. 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 No, is that Gloucester? I don't know. Gloucester. 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 Uh, Gloucester. Boonton. 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 Pequanoch. Oh. Pequanoch. Pequanoch. Uh, boy. Uh, Pequanoch. Pequanoch. I'm gonna go with Pequanoch. 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 Munachi. Munachi and Munachi. Munachi. Munaki and uh, Munichi. Munichi. In 2020, the Hurricane Junior Golf Tour partnered with Radisson Hotels to give junior golfers and their families a piece of home while on the road. Radisson Hotel brands embody a modern vision of hospitality, including authentic local taste, stylish living design, unique locations, and vibrant social scenes, all while offering award-winning and exceptional hotel experiences originating from their strong Scandinavian heritage of design and innovation. Enjoy more points, more partners, and more places with Radisson Rewards, the global hotel rewards program from Radisson Hotel. Whether traveling for business, leisure, or to one of the HJGT's 285 junior golf tournaments throughout the country, Radisson Hotels and the Radisson Rewards Program have you covered. Visit hjgt.org backslash Radisson or go to RadissonHotels.com to sign up for the rewards program and book your next day today. All right, everybody. Well, that's all that we've got for you for season one. Even though I'm heading back to college, the Junior Golf Network still has plans to continue. So be sure to follow them on all social media platforms at Junior Golf Network. I'm your host, Sarah Davis. It's been an absolute pleasure being with you. Stay tuned for more.